Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism and narcissistic relationships and healing from narcissistic relationships. And there's a theme that comes up a lot in narcissistic relationship, which are pedestals. And one type of, I think all pedestals are bad, but there's one type of pedestal which comes up all the time in these relationships and that's the temporary pedestal. So let's take a look at that. I mean, let's face it, you know why pedestals are bad? I mean, we don't tend to have them in our house, right? Because Invariably, the thing that's on top of a pedestal gets knocked off and then it breaks. And that includes when people are put on pedestals. And pedestals are a classic part of narcissistic relationship. We often put the narcissist on a pedestal, love bombing and all of that. But what gets tricky is they quite often also put us on a pedestal, at least for a minute. This may be most precarious when someone's a child. Now, typically it's the golden child who's placed on a pedestal, but it's not just them. The narcissistic parent may use the pedestal as a place to sort of dangle as a kind of reward and a manipulation. If you be what the parent wants, you will be elevated to that place. And while on the pedestal, because a child is a child, the child may feel seen and valued and special. They may get stuff. It's natural for a child to want that. However, given that the narcissistic parent's behavior may not change just because the child is on a pedestal, the child then has to navigate the dissonance between the feeling of being seen and heard and maybe even cherished and the narcissistic parent's ongoing bad behavior. The narcissistic parent's pedestal may involve having things happen like getting their time, getting praise from them, maybe even having like a special outing or getting gifts or things like that. The pedestal is also a reminder of how conditional narcissistic relationships are. To stay on that pedestal with that big beautiful view from all the way up there, it does mean buying into the narcissistic parent's system, system of thought, system of everything being who they want, showing interest in, to, in the activities that matter to them, which could mean literally watching the TV shows they want, taking on sports and hobbies or other interests they're interested in. And when that is done, when you don't do that anymore, you're not likely to stay on that pedestal much longer. The difficult aspect of this whole pedestal thing is that the child is not jumping into this with eyes wide open like a transactional play, but rather they just are desperate for a parent's validation and to remain connected or attached to a parent. It's a natural drive for a child, but in a healthy parental relationship, the child should not have to give up on what they care about and become what the parent wants. In a narcissistic parental relationship, it's almost required though that the child does that to stay attached. But on that pedestal, the child learns simultaneous place of safety and peril, of love and the abandonment that's always hanging just within reach in a narcissistic relationship that teaches us, keeps us in our place. Because if you don't show up the way the narcissistic parent wants, then it becomes very clear that you will be removed from that pedestal. And that risk that the view from up there, the joy of being up there could be lost so easily, creates a sort of dysfunctional schema that you can only keep love by becoming what someone else expects you to be. And if you don't do that, you will be abandoned or lose their regard. That schema can persist and be the roadmap that guides all relationships going forward. Many children who have survived this kind of pedestal on and off will sometimes look back with a mix of shame, sadness, grief, anger, and a sense of complicity that they kept shaping themselves and doing things to stay on that parent's pedestal. But as a child, you were just doing what you needed to do to be attached. A child is not being calculating. It's a child trying to adapt to a messed up rule book. And the idea of the pedestal gets conflated with love for the child, which really it's not. It's a reward for being good supply for the narcissistic parent. And because children often ask for so little, they do ask for so little, the parent doesn't have to do much for the child for the child to feel as though they're on the pedestal. 
There's also sometimes a sense of guilt for some children who get to be on that pedestal, especially if other siblings don't get elevated in that way. For example, scapegoated siblings or scapegoated children rarely do. The pedestal, in short, really sucks. The temporary pedestal model doesn't just exist, though, with narcissistic parents, though it's most powerful and potent in that situation, sort of trains us for a lifetime. This temporary pedestal can also show up in intimate relationships, in narcissistic workplaces, really pretty much any narcissistic relationship. All of us want to feel special, especially in high stakes relationships. So for example, during the love bombing phase, you may have spent some time on that pedestal. They put you up there pretty quick. The devaluing means being taken down. And then when you are really useful to them, you get put back on. The challenge with the pedestal is that once you are on it, the risk of being removed is the constant threat that's hanging out there in the relationship. And especially for folks who did not have the experience of feeling cherished or seen as a child, when the opportunity to be on a pedestal in adulthood shows up, it can be very alluring and even go against our sense of reason this idea, we, it goes against our sense of reason that we find any comfort in it. But all of this reflects an indoctrination process. If you play the narcissistic person's ground game, you're seen. And little by little, that means that to be on the pedestal means that we would have had to give up on our true selves to be what they want. And that honoring ourselves means that we are not seen or valued. We don't get to be on the pedestal then. In that relationship, we learn the usual thing of all narcissistic relationships, you can't win. In narcissistic workplaces, the pedestal may be a way for a narcissistic boss to foster competition amongst team members, everyone fighting to be the favorite child and get the perks and the attention and the promised opportunities. And it goes beyond a bonus or a better parking spot or getting to have lunch with the boss. There is this sense that a narcissistic boss can skillfully create a sort of a, a place where you're the chosen family member. And for anyone for whom that's a core wound, it works well to keep people in the workplace fighting for regard from that boss and doing things at work that may even be at odds with your values because it's a chance to work through an earlier conflict from your life. And listen, the pedestal thing is tricky because we may also and often do put the narcissistic person on a pedestal, whether that's idolizing a narcissistic parent when we were a child, swooning over a narcissistic partner or hyper respecting a narcissistic boss. It can become a very toxic dance. We pedestalize them. They may pedestalize us. The difference is that a healthy person isn't using the pedestal as a tool of manipulation, but instead it almost really represents a larger trauma bonded dynamic where these relationships in order for them to work, it means that the narcissistic person does need to be idealized. So you have to be very wary of the pedestal. The air is thin up there and it's farther to fall down. So you'll really get hurt. If you're on a narcissistic person's pedestal, you had to give up a lot of yourself to get there. You may not have known it, but you did. And some of the tension and trauma bonded dynamics you may have experienced could originate from these perilous pedestals. Maybe healing and understanding though, all this stuff about narcissism is the psychological version of a parachute. So when you do get knocked off of that pedestal, the landing will be a lot softer. Hope that's helpful. Thanks again.